Hi folks, um, my name is Ped Robinson. A um, bit about me, I've been a Linux user for some time, um, working on ARM and sort of embedded edge IoT devices since around 2010. Um, been employed by Red Hat doing various different roles since 2012. Um, and for the last six years, I've been um, the lead of device edge and IoT. Um, so why am I talking about wireless? Um, I'm co-maintainer of Linux firmware in Fedora. Um, one of the ARM64 leads in Fedora. Um, I've worked on numerous um, edge and IoT devices, like literally hundreds of them, um, with upstream Linux generic distros, um, worked with Linaro um, and the wider ecosystem on like device standardization, system ready, all sorts of other specs. Um, this talk, it's not a rant. I want to have a discussion. Um, the wireless experience, and in this case, I'm mostly talking about um, Wi Fi and Bluetooth. Um, it's generally just not pleasant. Um, the amount of regressions we get, the amount of devices that just don't work out of the box um is just astounding um so the main ones i deal with um the intel wi-fi the broadcom stack which is now a group of three different companies uh the Mar marvel ones real tech qualcomm mediatek um so why why are they bad um the intel stuff used to be the best wi-fi for linux it might still be but we end up in situations where um, they'll ship a Bluetooth firmware update and suddenly like hundreds of people in Fedora um, can't connect to Wi-Fi anymore. Who is they? Sorry? Who is they? Is it a, is it a hardware vendor update or a kernel firmware update? Um, no, bro uh, like the Bluetooth firmware update that Intel ships and sends to Linux firmware. Um, and so you'll reach out to maintainer, oh, but it's fixed in Next. But we're at RC1, so we'll see like Next land in the next six months. What are users supposed to do between then? And they're like, oh, well, just don't update Linux firmware so regularly. <laughs> but the GPU drivers need new firmware for the latest GPU hardware. Am I supposed to split out hundreds of things and ship everything separately? Um, they also just like randomly stop supporting the older devices um, and firmware updates. I'm sure there's CVEs. I have no proof, but it's it's interesting. It's just like and like in the case of like Bluetooth updates breaking Wi-Fi. I'm guessing it's because of coexistence, but nobody knows. I just like to point out in Zephyr, we do actually list CVs that are fixed. So, you know, message, use Zephyr in your firmware. <laughs> um, Broadcom Wi Fi, the Madage Trois, also the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, so, back in 2017, Broadcom sold their I IoT wireless division to Cyprus. And then in 2019 or 2020, something like that, they sold their IoT wireless division to Synaptix. Interesting how they can sell it twice. Um, they kept the Wi-Fi for their high value customers, also known as Apple and Dell and other, like the tier one vendors, basically. Um, so when that happened, we managed to get a discussion with Cyprus and came to an agreement with them that they would ship generic firmware for Linux firmware that was maybe not the most optimized firmware for all the devices, but would generally work across all the regions and people could get wireless um, firmware that would work. Um, they would ship us new versions every quarter, dealing with CVEs and various other bits and pieces. But then they were bought by Infineon and the people we were dealing with stopped replying to emails or their emails would bounce. Um, so I don't know whether that was legal or they made redundancies or 
people decided that they didn't want to work at Infinity and, and moved on to bigger and better things. Um, Broadcom sort of ships wireless firmware for the parts they still support, except when they don't, or there's a new one. And every time they need to do a firmware update, they apparently need to go and engage with legal to get release. I mean, why not just have a generic agreement with legal where you have a process which legal agrees is fine and update regular ones? You know, I've seen quotes on the list where they say, oh, but it's not affected by CVEs, except that, you know, your site lists all these CVEs. Oh, but that's a different driver. Can't tell me that the firmware is completely different and that it won't use the same code, even if it's a slightly tweaked firmware. You know, and other vendors, and like literally the firmwares that you can go and get for theirs has like a line in there basically saying it's not redistributable. Um, then we get to Synaptics. Well, they're ugly. Um, I spoke to one of the um, high level people within the Synaptics wireless division at a conference in London. We don't sell to Linux vendors, so we don't have to support firmware on Linux. Well, that's interesting. I have at least three or four devices sitting on my desk that have your parts in there. Oh, that's not possible, sir. Bullshit. <laughs> And then just don't even start me on their Bluetooth. It doesn't work. They don't ship firmware, any of them. Um, in the case of Synaptics, um, I've been working with vendors. Like one of the things of dealing with Edge at Red Hat is that I'm speaking to vendors that are um, selling devices or planning on deploying thousands of devices, millions of devices, um, even a couple of customers that are looking at um, devices running Linux in the hundreds of million ranges. Funnily enough, when they want to run rail, they actually listen to you about what hardware is and what hardware is well supported. Um, I've had vendors that are changing Wi-Fi interfaces um, to ones that are different. Um, so this is going to affect your bottom line eventually. Um, so, you know, come and engage with the Linux ecosystem. Um, moving on to Marvell. Or is that NXP um, or half a dozen other companies that resell their parts? Um, Upstream only supports hard, old hardware. Again, Marvel sold their IP to NXP, but Marvel is also still producing new IP. Sounds familiar. Um, similar IP, similar firmware, not quite the same. You know, it, it's horrible. Like, NXP doesn't support anything at all upstream with regards to this stuff. Um, the Marvel stuff seems to be mostly just kernel-wide updates for locking or various other bits and pieces. Um, Realtek, another piece of hardware, another driver thrown over the fence into staging. In some cases now, they just don't even bother. Um, the new, you know, RTW8889 has support for PCI, but not for USB or anything else. Um, still no firmware for lots of the modules. Um, and the ones in drive, um, in staging are mostly just abandoned. Um, firmware, when they do update it, regularly regresses, random devices, um, sold in tier one vendor laptops and things. All the rest are no better. Firmware regularly regressing on stable releases. Firmware regularly just crashing because, you know, someone's deemed to use something like WPA3, 5 gigahertz, or, you know, maybe if you've just looked at it the wrong way. How do we fix that? I don't know. How do we fix vendors? How do we encourage them to care generally about Linux users? Um, how do we remove the terrible Stockholm syndrome with Linux wireless? I have one suggestion. I mean, like these, these vendors, they have hardware, they can donate hardware. Uh, they can donate money to set up like an actual, uh, continuous, uh, test, uh, service and system. And if something's broken, like if you get a regression, shoot the person an email, make someone accountable for that. Right. Yeah. So like, I, like, as soon as I get a report, I email the maintainer, sometimes you'll get a reply three months later. Am I supposed to stalk them? 
Like there's literally- Well, it's gotta be bad advertisement. It's gotta be on the web. People have to see like, these are the vendors who are causing regressions and like have like a score, have like a top 10. I mean, I, I, I've considered for some of the vendors actually just like submitting patches to the wireless mailing list to move the vent, like the whole vendor driver to staging to like start a discussion about it. And like, it, it won't achieve anything, but at least like people will start to be aware. Uh, so I actually play with all the wireless stuff pretty extensively. I like know which one is better. But um, for media tech, have you actually had like a lot of issues with their recent stuff or? Yeah, like, it, like the, not the 7663s, but like the 7610s, the 7612s, the 7920. For the media tech stuff? Yeah. Yeah, off the top of my head, I don't know. Oh, like, okay. I would have to go back through bug reports and okay. things like that. But they're generally, the USB ones at least are generally pretty reliable. Uh, it varies. It varies, yeah. Well, and, and like part of the problem here as well is like, you know, the quality of access points are variable. Yeah. And so like, I mean, I've seen myself where I, I used to have a widely available access point from a vendor at home and then I switched to a different vendor to, because it stopped getting security updates and suddenly like four or five devices that I'd never managed to get working suddenly started connecting to the access point. So it, it's it, like wireless is hard because you've got a lot of variables, but like in the case of some of them, like you try and connect to an access point and the firmware crashes, like it shouldn't be like, the experience shouldn't be that bad. Hey, I wanted to ask, uh, what is your experience with the Intel maintainer? Uh, do they actually respond to patches? Because I never got them to. Um, so the Intel ones are sometimes like three or four months to get a response. Um, and like the Intel driver, like about 5.17 regressed on a certain situation. And like we worked out that there was this new firmware blob that was shipped. And it turns out that this new firmware blob was designed to work with the Intel management engine so that it could use the Wi-Fi interface to send traffic. And then, so there was bugs filed and various other bits and pieces. And like eventually, literally only the other day, an update was said, oh, you shouldn't be enabling that. Oh, that's interesting. And then, so I started to dig through this. It had been tested on one wireless interface card um, basically didn't work. And there's now been a patch submitted to that to basically mark that whole thing as broken. But, you know, in say Fedora, for example, we get a request from a user or someone to enable something so that they can use that functionality, but it regresses for everyone else. And so it's a balancing act and a problem. And it takes significant amounts of people's time. Um, but even when it does, like, you know, and I was um, chatting to someone earlier today where they were just like, I'm so sick of the Bluetooth stack. It's horrific. It regresses all the time. And I went, yeah, no kidding. Like, you know, it's constant, like, and like I also co-maintain the blue subsystem. Um, I don't know what I did wrong in a past life. <laughs> like, I, I, I think I just like pain or something, but like, you know, the amount of times it all just regresses, regresses, regresses. Like, it is just a terrible experience. Can... Do you have any automated tests to track how those things break? Well, that's really like, so Red Hat themselves, we have a wireless lab with Faraday cages and things like yep. that, but it's changing so constantly and all the time, like, basically have to get in a queue to get access to all the hardware to be able to run the tests. Yeah, I, and like, I, this isn't my day job. Like, this is something that I've ended up doing because I need this stuff for IoT and Edge. But, so it's like, I don't have, like, I could literally deal with this stuff and deal with regressions full time. And so that's, that's why, not my that's job. That's why I'm asking because I'm from Red Hat to CKI project. Uh, we do continuous integration for the kernel. If your hardware is available in Beaker, talk to us. 
I can help you set up. I'll speak to you afterwards. Yeah. So um, I feel your pain. Uh, I was the one who sent that patch for marking the IWL thing as broken. Um, and this has been an issue for so long. I think I will encourage public shaming, as as you were saying. I'm not sure it's going to help. Yeah. Um, I have, like, Intel is not the worst, but we do no, get these kinds of worst, issues. But um, not. It's not a pleasant experience. Qualcomm, Atheris don't really can. The firmware is a mess. Like I know people who have access to the source code and refuse to touch it with a like poking stick. Um, Media uh, MediaTek is probably the most responsible vendor so far. Like they at least write a good driver. Um, I'm not so sure about the firmware problem. So I I don't have a good solution. Um, ha just having. CKI with the hardware would be nice. The problem is it's hard because you need to actually have devices connect. And yeah. there's this thing where um, diff like different clients will trigger different bugs and different firmwares. Yeah. So you really need to spin up everything and do. Well, and you also need to like change the access point as well to support just WPA2 Enterprise, yeah. WPA3, all sorts of other things like. Yeah. You know, to be able to cycle it, you almost need like to be able to cycle both sides, like the access point side as well as the client side. And then you also need to throw in Bluetooth into that as well um, yeah. and various other bits and pieces. It's a very complex problem to solve. And, and, and like and I've been working behind the scenes with vendors as well to try and improve the situation and like some vendors respond, some vendors respond and go, well, give us a list of the clients that we that are buying the hardware. And it's just like, well, I don't have an NDA with you. I can't tell you our clients, um, but I can tell you they're taking pieces of hardware out and putting different pieces of hardware in. Um, like, so it, it's... Can, for, for the firmware thing, like, in the kernel, if, if a driver breaks, we revert the patch, right? Like, can we refuse to skip firmware updates and like revert them in the in the case you said it's, it's fixed the next, okay, until the next thing lands, we're just gonna revert your latest firmware update because it broke something. Is that will will that help apply pressure to vendors? Um, possibly, and it's certainly something that I have considered. Yeah, like if, if we have a CI system that can catch it really early, we can sort of... Yeah. Yeah, and like ultimately this is why I put this talk in, is to start to do the public shaming as well. Because Excellent. I've tried the sort of softly, softly behind the scenes. Um, and, you know, it gets to a point where you just have to call them out on their bullshit. So my, one suggestion I have on the that we know we need carrots and sticks here um, is I would really encourage you to do this talk with a little bit more uh, graphic shaming um, at um, in a slightly less technical way at you know there's dozens of these uh, IOT or industrial industry of things etc conferences and I think um, you know that list you know, people, CEOs in the room will be like, oh, shit, I'm going to deploy a million devices on, you know, my Raspberry Pi variant, and uh, I just bought chips from a bad vendor, right? So you say, do you have an NDA that prevents you from talking? Um, the question is, who doesn't? Yeah. Right? Well, and, like, from a Bluetooth point of view, I now actually tell vendors, like, look at someone like Nordic, and use Zephyr for the Bluetooth controller to interface to Linux, because at least you'll get a stable platform. And like someone like Nordic specializes in Bluetooth, um, and if they're not going to do it well, you've got a problem. But like that doesn't solve the Wi-Fi side of things. Um, and it like I noticed like Nordic, and like you know you could put in like a. Um, which does Wi-Fi, but like that in itself brings in other problems. Um, have you had any dealings with uh, Atmel microchip or Redpine signals, now Silicon Labs? Um, 
that like they're what like I'm aware of their wireless stuff. It doesn't come up that much with customers. And like the quality is what in your opinion? I don't have any, so I don't yeah. really know to be honest. Thanks. So oh, all of this came up this morning in the uh, regressions talk too. And one of the, in fact, they asked, is, is there a kernel subsystem that is, or, or are there kernel subsystems that are particularly bad at, at regressions and, and dealing with regressions? And are there kernel subsystems that are particularly good? And you know, Greg immediately called out Bluetooth as being the worst. Uh, and I'm not surprised. No, but the, one of the things that came up, again, the, the waiting for RC1 and those things, and that's been discussed and it's been problematic for years, but now that Thorsten's doing this this regression tracking a little bit better, and you find, oh, right, well, there, there are patches here and these patches haven't been pushed and they haven't been pushed to Linux, uh, to Linux and it's been you know two weeks now, or so it looks like there are becoming some slightly more formalized um, escalation procedures yeah i actually spoke to him about that this morning over coffee yeah so so, so that's that's one thing that might help um you know the, the firmware is a little bit harder to deal with in in that sort of a regard but at least on the kernel side we do have some methods but somebody's actually got to develop the patch yeah um, of course if somebody goes to the trouble of bisecting uh the the other option is, is using the hammer and just forcing a revert of the patch that introduced it uh, so uh, sorry to interrupt. Uh, we're actually at time, but I think this is like such an important topic, and I totally encourage you to pu pu public shaming, continuous test. This is something that the vendors need to invest in. In any case, our next speaker. Actually, uh, can I get a round of applause for Peter? Because this is a, a recurring theme. Second. Yeah, thanks very much.